It's another cold one here. When I first started working there, I felt like I was in danger. Whatever was in the building put their hands on me <laughs> and pushed me over. It scared the crap out of me. Knowing that there's a spirit in there that has taken on your shape. At that point, I got scared. These incidents made me a believer. Does she want to kill me? to watch is based on true events. Some details have been altered to protect confidentiality. My name is Tim, and I work the night shift. As midnight is about to strike, radio DJ Tim arrives for his first night of his dream job. He's finally hit the big time. I worked as an overnight DJ and uh, morning show producer uh, doing multiple duties. As a new employee of the station, Tim will be working very hard during the off hours. It was my job to prepare not only a radio broadcast after midnight, but news for my sister radio stations. I was very excited about the job. It was dark at that time, and so I made sure to flip on all the lights when I came in. Working alone in a popular radio station, Tim has plenty to keep him busy on this long, lonely night. Literally, I was on my feet and moving most of those hours between midnight and 6 o'clock in the morning. It's been quiet at the station so far. Then things started happening very strange. I thought I heard a giggle. I dismissed it and uh, didn't think anything else of it. And this one's for all you night shifters out there. Friends, I feel you. It's a lonely job, but somebody's got to do it. As I'm broadcasting for that short break, I hear somebody knocking at my studio door. It was uh, uh, kind of a, uh, a nervous knocking, very insistent. I was a little bit uh, put off by that because you can hear the, uh, the knocking sound come over the air. Okay, I'm on the air. Hello? There was nobody there. What do you mean there was nobody there? I could see all the way to the end of the, the hallway. The source of the banging can't be explained. I thought I was, you know, fooling myself or hearing things. Let's keep it rolling with another stone cold classic. Something just won't leave Tim alone. I thought I saw like a, a 10 year old uh, child. And I realized, wait a second, something is not right here. I was seeing something that shouldn't be there. Tim goes searching for that something.
I was completely alone. Nobody was there. Whatever's going on here, I, I'm, I'm really, really bothered by this. I got very agitated. Tim's dream job is becoming a nightmare. It's another cold one here, so make sure you crank that heat. And for those of you without any heat, here's another hot little tune. The disturbances are coming from all over the building. It sounded like someone pacing above my studio. Whatever it is, it's coming closer. It got extremely cold in, in that studio. I thought I would see somebody in the hallway. I could see nobody there. Finding nothing in the hallway, Tim braves the stairwell. The footsteps upstairs keep getting louder. When I went to the stairs, I got the sensation that something is watching me on that landing. Well, that, is anyone there? You can come out now. Hello? I climbed the stairs, and that was a mistake. Friends, I feel you. Alone on the night shift. At one of the top radio stations in the US, DJ Tim tries to hold it together in the face of unexplained disturbances. Hello? At that point, I got scared. Is anyone there? Why, why is this happening? Am I going crazy? <laughs> Tim tries to find safety in his studio. These things definitely should not be happening. He presses on. Tim can't leave dead air. New details in a police investigation where police report that a homicide is expected to, <laughs> pardon me, homicide is suspected in a, <sighs> Hey, Tim, how was your shift? Oh. Hey, this place is more than a little weird. Yeah, well, it has a history. He let me know that this building had been a funeral home at one time. A lot of death happened in this place. Which could explain what Tim has been seeing. And he says, uh, probably this is one of the kids that passed away. You've got yourself a ghost. I don't know if I can handle this. 
I go, that's insane. That was not the explanation I was expecting. The building that houses Tim's radio studio was at one time a funeral home linked with the bodies of those who died. Some of these spirits died under extremely distressing circumstances. No wonder that if they still linger on this earthly plane, they are confused, they are troubled, and in some cases, they're angry. He goes, that's why we've had several people leave the position that you're in. I got to figure out what I'm going to do, man. Why didn't you quit? I was really enjoying my job. I didn't want to quit, even though I'm like, this is weird. You know, I, I work in a funeral home, really? Determined to keep the job that he loves, Tim returns for the night shift with a strategy. I kept my studio door open when I was broadcasting. That way, he can keep an eye on the hallway. It was a busy night in sports last night with the Blue Jays taking on the Yankees. And then it started up again. I would hear uh, the footsteps on the landing from the top portion of the stairs, almost like a child. He tries to ignore the sounds. Uh, four to two. Um, and now this. Until he no longer can. And I said, enough is enough. I'm going to confront this spirit. Tim is convinced she's in the stairwell. Opened up that access door to the stairwell, and I heard a giggle. <laughs> can prepare Tim for what he sees next. <laughs> and suddenly, the little girl is no longer alone. She's joined by a blood-spitting entity. She looks at me in a very, very strange way. Stay, stay back. What are you doing? Stay away from me. I felt like I was in danger. It's about life and death. Tim is trapped in the studio. Tim, whoa, whoa, Tim, what's wrong? Calm down, big guy. Everything's gonna be okay. But Tim knows that nothing here will be okay, unless he can come up with a plan. I didn't want to quit my job, but I had to figure out some way to deal with these spirits. In cases like this, where we have victims dying under tragic circumstances, those spirits can often be confused. They can be sometimes aggressive in trying to communicate with the living. As night returns, Tim does as well. Drawing was a way for me to make sense of something that was beyond what I was able to experience before. The lady in white was uh, a figure I could not get out of my head, so I drew her. He has a unique way of calming himself and the spirits. I was a skeptic, and these incidents made me a believer. 
Thanks for a good night. I would uh, thank them, the entities, when I left. And for a while, that would work. I'm Heather, and I work the night shift. In one of Canada's largest cities, Heather, a restaurant entrepreneur, is about to unveil the city's latest fine dining experience against all odds. It had been abandoned by the last people that were in there. Nobody could make it work for longer than two or three years, and everyone went bankrupt. And it just had a bad reputation for um, business. It also had a bad reputation for being haunted. I knew the rumors that it was haunted, but I wasn't ready to believe them. I thought people were just uh, making stuff up about ghosts and spirits. Heather needs to succeed where others have failed. I invested a lot of my own personal money, so there was, I risked a lot here. I had a lot at stake, for sure. I took it upon myself as a challenge to prove them wrong that I could do it. But there's no denying the place oozes a certain atmosphere. Kind of had a ghostly feeling to it. It was just eerie. With a grand opening set for tomorrow, Heather's burning the midnight oil. I worked long hours because I just am that kind of a person. I wanted to make sure everything was done perfectly. It's now 2 a.m. No one else is expected in the building until daybreak. And yet... I would hear banging on the air conditioning, furnace, uh, the heating and cooling system, basically. Hardly unusual for an old house. I just kept trying to ignore the sounds and, and keep working. And then I heard someone walking up and down the stairs, which freaked me out because there was no one in the building but me, I hoped. I looked around, there was nobody there. I'm not someone that scares easily. So I went to investigate. Got myself a baseball bat, ready to go, just in case. And uh, I was ready to swing. Sounds lead her to an old back room. I could hear glasses breaking. She feels certain she's being followed. I did see a vision of somebody. Well, when I turned farther to look at who it was, there was nobody there. Anyone there? Scared the crap out of me. Even though I'd heard the rumors about there being something in there that people called it a haunted house, I thought it wasn't possible. So how'd you make sense of this? I questioned myself whether I was just actually working too hard and imagining it all. So just carried on for the night. Back in her office, she refocuses her attention on the business at hand, tomorrow's grand opening. I just wanted to open the door so I could get people to come in and enjoy what we'd created and, and to enjoy the food and the whole atmosphere. <laughs> Day 
day comes and goes. Heather's opening night is a rousing success. We had a really busy night, and the waiters were all swamped. So it was highly exciting for everyone and all my staff. With only a few stragglers left, later that evening, things go south. What was that? Strange noises coming from somewhere. So we proceeded to look for where the noise might be coming from. outside the door and we could still hear noises, things crashing. It was very frightening. The noises stopped and we walked in and there was nobody there. I felt something near me that wasn't tangible, but I knew it was there. I saw a blur of somebody in a red dress. I was scared. In the middle of her restaurant's grand opening, Heather and a coworker suffer a terrifying encounter. I did see a vision of somebody in a red dress. But when I turned to look at who it was, there was nobody there. At that point, I started to think that maybe there was truth to the rumors, that it was haunted. Then my next idea was, are we in danger? I was terrified when that happened. Well, I never experienced anything like that. I didn't know how to, what to do or how to handle it. But I didn't want to tell the staff how I was feeling at that point. Heather's sole drive now is to see her last customers off, close up, and go home for the night. felt like a, a bodily presence was near me, but there was never anything that I could see. Okay. I was scared and, and more worried for my staff than I was for myself. Worried her erratic state may have spooked her customers, Heather tries to make amends. I'd love to offer you a... But things... Excuse me for just a moment. Go from bad to worse. I felt a, a quite a jolt on my shoulder, and there was nobody beside me. <laughs> I, I thought that I would. I would. <laughs> Whatever was in the building put their hands on me and, and pushed me over. You okay? <sighs> yeah, I'm fine. Sure? Um, yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm fine. I'm, uh, I'm gonna get you something really special, okay? I'll be right back. Did you feel like you were in danger? 
I started to get quite fearful. Didn't know how to protect myself. I didn't know what I was protecting myself from. With Heather's last customers out the door, a deep chill fills the room. I knew there was something else in this restaurant with me. I could feel it. <laughs> I saw this woman in a red dress that looked like me. It's like looking into a mirror. <laughs> Knowing that there's a spirit in there that has taken on your shape, is a terrifying thing. This could well be a phenomenon known as the doppelganger, where an entity takes on the guise of a living person. Without warning, the doppelganger vanishes into thin air. I didn't know then if she wanted me to be her friend or whether she wanted to kill me. Absolutely terrified. I was afraid for my life. This entity is engaged on what appears to be a prolonged psychic assault on Heather. It's making her life hell. Why didn't you just leave? Um, I didn't want to run away because I had a lot of money invested in this, this project. I mean, it was half a million dollars. I was determined to, to carry on. Once I came to the conclusion that there actually was a spirit in there, I wanted to do some research and see if I could figure out what happened here. What spirit is in here and where did it come from? She uncovers the dark and twisted history of the mansion. I found out that it was um, owned by a wealthy family and they had a daughter named Sarah. The tragic story of their daughter, Sarah, was that she was stood up at the altar and she came back to this beautiful mansion and she went up to the third floor where my office was ah! and hung herself there in a red dress. I realized then that what I'd been seeing around the restaurant all this time was actually Sarah. And I believe that that was her spirit that was still in there. Why do you think she was coming after you? I have a great life and maybe she was jealous of that because she never had what I have. One thing's for sure. Sarah is leaving anytime soon. Sarah didn't want me there, didn't want my business there, and tried everything in her power to not let us open and then to not make it comfortable for us to be in there. She wanted the house to herself. There are a number of ways in which entities can attack the living. Sometimes those attacks are physical, but there are other forms of attack. I was feeling Sarah's presence more than anything. We can see psychic attacks in which a spirit wears down the psychic defenses of its target. Those people can be at risk of many behavioral crises, up to and including taking their own lives. I heard her coming down the hall. In the end, Sarah's haunting forces Heather to close down her dream restaurant. Word did get around that the place had some kind of weird spirit in it. When Sarah comes into the room, uh, I get this tingly sensation and short of breath, and I start to sweat and shake. 
and my face goes ashen white. It seems like it's happening. Look how you're shaking. Yeah, I know. I, I'm start, it's starting. She came for the interview. My name is Dan, and I work the night shift. Thirty-two-year-old Dan works as a night manager in a bowling alley that has seen better days. I was super excited to use my marketing degree to go into a bowling alley and try to revive kind of a dying sport. Dan's shift begins long after the customers have left. Part of my job before starting to count the money would be make sure that there's nobody left in the building, so I would actually have to do a walk around. Oftentimes, I found myself there alone five or six days a week. He's not long on the job before he realizes there's something unusual about this bowling alley. It started to get strange. One night, I was getting the lanes ready for the next morning for the league. Plugged the machine in, got it ready, set it down on the lane, started running it. And I had to go back in the kitchen to start getting some other things ready for the next morning. I came out and it was unplugged. There is no explanation for the heavy-duty plug being pulled from its socket. There was nobody in the building. I had made sure that everything was locked up. It was just me. So that happened not once, twice, but three times in a row. I plugged that, the, the lane machine back in in order to get that job done. I knew something was there, something that I couldn't see with my own eyes. I, I couldn't, couldn't wait to get out of there. I mean, it is startling, and uh, it did begin to freak me out. Night finds Dan making his way back to the bowling alley. I was working at a hotel, uh, a nice hotel, and I was getting paid half of what I was getting paid at this bowling alley. So, you know, some, sometimes you have to deal with things that you don't like. Dan settles in the safety of his office to finish up his auditing duties. I would hear what sounded like thuds, footsteps, coming from the basement. He checks the surveillance screens. No one is in the building. But Dan isn't alone, hearing strange sounds. Well, I was a maintenance man and an automatic pin setter. I hear the same thing. One day, I followed him downstairs. Hello? Anybody here? Just slowly, just like somebody, boom, boom boom, walking down the stairs, and then it stops. I was working there for 15 years before I saw anything happen like that. Dan had also followed the footsteps someone down there? to the bowels of the bowling alley. Is there someone down here? Who is that? Tina, I didn't even know that you had heard those. Yes. You'd look over your shoulder knowing that there could be something possibly watching. What he's describing exactly what I saw. Come on, man, who's there? I hear Bob. I'm looking around, and I hear Bob. I ran up to the front real quick. That presence in the basement terrorizes Dan as well. I saw this shadow. <laughs> what is going on? Like Bob, Dan
and races away from the basement. To my astonishment, he also had experienced the same things. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you warn Dan? I didn't think uh, anybody would believe me. I kind of felt the same way yes. like when things were happening to me. Dan and Bob are both experiencing the same types of events in the same location, sometimes independently of one another. That makes their evidence, in my view, more compelling. He has grave concerns about returning to his night shift. Did you have the thought that it could hurt you? I, I think in my mind, I hoped that it couldn't. I, I hoped that it couldn't hurt me. I couldn't just leave. I was very torn because I loved the job. And uh, I had to provide for my family, so it was a significant amount of pain for me. That night gets stranger. So when I was sitting in the main office, it sounded like a, a game of bowling was going on. And you could see some of the lanes from the office, but not all of them. You had to actually get up, get out the door. Unexplained voices echo throughout the supposedly empty alley. I would walk over to the lanes and check to see if maybe somebody's pulling a prank on me. There's someone in here? Nobody was there. There's no balls on the lanes. Is this something that maybe sound is echoing off the wall? I, I had no, no idea what, how this was happening or why it was happening. It's no longer just voices. Look at that. Dan sees something he has no words for. Dan, a night manager at a bowling alley rumored to be haunted, is now face to face with an angry presence. Look at that. Off to the corner of my eye, I had saw it looked like a person. No! 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 It scared the crap out of me. what I saw. Bob has also been frightened by this terrorizing entity. What did you think it was? A ghost, an apparition. Couldn't see through it. It was just darker than the background. It was darker than dark. dissipated right into the wall. Yes, that's what I, I saw that, exactly. Same thing I saw. Really just see that, that that, that really just happened. It's surreal. When I saw that apparition walking through the wall, that was like really, really like heavy. You're the only one in the bowling center, but there could be something there from beyond in, this, in the building with you at the same time. At first, it seems as if what Dan and Bob are witnessing is a residual haunting, a type of paranormal recording mechanism. But as things progress, they soon begin to realize they're dealing with something far more intelligent. That was the thing that made me know there was some kind of spirit in the building. Freaked you out knowing that something was there. It was scary. It was definitely scary. Knowing that the bowling alley is haunted, both men try to make sense of their otherworldly encounters. Well, there was another employee named Michael, the late maintenance guy. He worked there since he was a very young man until he was about 62, 63 years old. He passed away unexpectedly at home. And me and Danny suspect that he never passed on to the other world 
The mechanic, this was his thing. This was his job. He loved this place. The bowling alley has no history of tragedy or violent death. So the spirit of the old mechanic probably has lingered there because he was very affectionate toward that place during his physical lifetime. It was somewhere he found comfortable. He was familiar with it. It was probably his happy place. And therefore, some part of him either returns after his death in spirit form or has lingered behind. I did end up quitting that job. I was scared. A little skeptical before this, and now I'm, I believe, I really believe.